So today I'll be talking about the T-72BME, a 2017 budget Belarusian upgrade for the T-72A, meant for poorer countries whose main threats are insurgent activity or neighbours of older tanks and weapons. And real quick before I continue, I'll be covering other niche AFVs in future videos, so if that's something you're interested in, I would recommend subscribing. Uh, let's start with the protection. As you can see, Contact 1 has been mounted on the front and sides, like on the T-72B, but there are a few differences. The contact one on the turret is mounted at an angle, which is more effective than the flat mount on the T-72B. Uh, there is also some contact one placed on the rear of the turret, which would be helpful in an insurgency context where a shape charge can come from anywhere. There is also cage armor mounted to the rear side of the tank, which can prevent detonation of early shape charges. The coverage is decent, however the rear and sides of the turret remain uncovered, and despite the chance of hitting the lower front plate being low, Adding some ERA there would be a nice addition. As to the quality protection, the front would be resistant to mid cold war shape charges and early kinetic rounds. The side would be resistant to early shape charges as well. Overall, the protection is sufficient for counterinsurgency activities on a budget. The mobility was also improved. The original V46 4 engine on the T72A was swapped out for an 840 horsepower V84 MS. This is the same horsepower as the V84 1 engine mounted on T72B but it comes with better filtration and electronics, extending the time between overhauls from 400 to 650 running hours. With the tank's weight of 44 tons, the power to weight ratio would be about 19 horsepower per tons, which is on the lower end of MVTs, but acceptable for a budget upgrade. The familiar 2A46 cannon has been retained, with some additional pressure gauges being mounted, which the manufacturer claims to increase accuracy by 10%. Rounds for the 2A46 are widely available, so sourcing ammunition shouldn't be a problem. The electronics were almost entirely overhauled. The radio was improved to a western one that came with multi-channeling capabilities and the range increased from 20 to 25 kilometers, which would come particularly handy with coordinating terror response in remote regions. An assortment of sensors to increase accuracy were also added, including an air temperature, atmospheric and wind sensor, among others, which fed data automatically into the FCS, unlike on the T-72B, which had manual data input for a smaller range of sensors or the T-72A, which had none of the above. An external power supply source was also added, which allowed the tank to operate quietly and conserve fuel while stationary. The most expensive part of the upgrade was probably the ESA 72U thermal site, which would use a Catherine FC module that would provide at least high-end second-gen thermal performance, perfect for spotting enemies. The commander can now take control over the cannon from the gunner, however, he doesn't have an independent thermal site, so this isn't true hunter kill capability. A laser range find was also fitted, which, together with the other FCS improvements, would make short work of any terrorist infantry or early MBTs. Overall, for a country like Nigeria that has a small stock of T-72As and is engaging in counter-terrorism operations in the north, this upgrade would be perfect. Despite the tank's advantages, it received no international orders, but in 2022 it was announced by the chairman of the State Industrial Committee that production of this tank for Belarusian use had begun. Use of this tank by Belarus, even against Poland, would probably prove to be disastrous. The best round that the normal 2A46 cannon can fire is the 3BM46, however we do not know how many Belarus possesses, and it is likely a small amount, so the 3BM42 would be the most common round. Against the M1A1, it only has a 17% chance of damage at 500m and 9% at 2km, and may I remind you this is the default M1A1, and not the set 3 free version that Poland has received, which comes with improved armour. It's likely the tanks such as the 2A5, K2 or SEP V3 would be entirely immune to even 3BM46. Any modern western shape charge or kinetic projectile would probably leave a hole on the other side of this tank. While operating in asymmetric terrain from a dug-in position, the shortcomings of the SCS can somewhat be mitigated, but it's pretty evident this tank would be a paperweight in such conflict. Some of these problems are being resolved with the T-72B2 tank, which I'll perhaps cover in another video, but it is still in trials.